Not gonna lie, the Dusty Classic didn't exactly go the way I thought it was gonna go, didn't exactly go the way I would want it to go, but the hits just keep on coming for Survivor Series weekend. <laughs> What's going on everybody, it's your buddy, it's your pal Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with your November 9th NXT review, rounding out the Dusty Rhodes Classic Tournament Finals 4 TakeOver Toronto, which is happening in two weeks. You guys all know that I'm going, I don't need to beat that into the death once again, but the first semi-final match is Gargano and Ciampa versus the Authors of Pain. I do, somebody asked me last week, why do I keep calling them Gargano and Ciampa when they have a proper tag team name? I don't like the hashtag DIY name. I think it sounds tacky. I think it's going with the Twitter trend, and yes, so do I, but I'm not trying to make money as a wrestler. As a wrestler, sorry, not a wrestling fan. Not a wrestling fan either. But, anyways, as we go on, Gargano and Ciampa take on the Authors of Pain. Ciampa and Akam start the keep mispronouncing those names, so I'm doing the best I can here. Corner spears by Akam, headlock by Ciampa, dropkick, two dropkicks by Gargano, and a boot by Gargano. Corner elbows by Gargano and Ciampa, a toss out by the Authors of Pain, and the Authors of Pain toss Gargano into Ciampa. It's cool, because... Basically, Gar Ciampa tries to do a suicide dive. They catch him. Gargano tries to do a suicide dive, and they block themselves. They shield themselves with his partner. It's interesting. It's not something that I've ever seen before, and it's a great way to send us into commercial break. Coming back from the commercial break, Razor rides a headlock and chokes on the ropes. Cheap shot by Ellering on the outside, who slams Gargano's face into the corner of the apron, which most commentators will tell you is the hardest part of the ring. A stomp and slam combination by the Office of Pain and a mud hole by Akam. Body shots by Razor. Overhead backbreaker submission by Akeem. Tornado DDT by Gargano. Knee strikes by Ciampa in a boot. Kitchen sink by Razor. Razor, sorry, Razor and Ciampa trade punches for a while. Huge German suplex by Gargano. And this is where we get into the final sort of segments of this match. Samoan drop fall away slam combination by Razor. He's got one guy on his back, he's got one guy in front of him, falls back into a Samoan drop and throws the other guy. So the only way I can really explain it to you guys is a Samoan drop fall away slam combination. Gargano and Ciampa head scissor the authors of pain into each other head first. They both go for a pin, they both miss, obviously. Um, knee strike by Ciampa off the apron, cannonball by Gargano off the apron, kick sandwich because I don't know what the hell else to call it by Gargano and Ciampa, but the Revival sneak attack Gargano on the outside. Ciampa eats a last chapter by the Authors of Pain, and the Authors of Pain win. Great match, told a couple different stories, kept the Revival thing going, which we'll talk about in a second. Didn't want the Authors of Pain to move forward here. I really wanted, you guys know, I finished off my video last week saying I wanted the finals of the Dusty Classic to be Sanity versus Gargano and Ciampa. As of now, we know that's not going to happen. As of now, we know Revival are not injured enough to be getting involved in matches, so it goes on as to the story of the rest of the night. Ty Dillinger is backstage cutting a pre-recorded promo about Bobby Roode and their match that's coming up at TakeOver. Nothing wrong with it. If you've heard one promo from Ty Dillinger about Bobby Roode, you didn't miss anything this time, I'll say that. TM61, who I really am struggling to give a shit about. I'm really trying versus Sanity. Sanity jumped them from behind before the match even starts, and they brawl two on four as we go into commercial break. Coming back from the commercial break, we start the match proper. Wolf and Thorin trade chops. Uh, Miller is on the outside for the majority of this match, so this two-on-one beatdown on Thorn goes on for a while. Um, Wolf and Thorn trade, uh, trade punches and chops, and an elevated uppercut by Fulton, a nerve hold by Fulton, and chops by Thorn. Corner splash by Fulton, and a two-on-one corner beatdown by Sanity. Wolf rakes the face, um, hits several, several elbow shots to the neck and turns it into a neck vice. Arm drag by Thorne and uppercuts by Wolf. Rolling clotheslines and a back suplex by Miller when he finally gets in the ring, but a clothesline from behind by Fulton, a drop kick by Thorne, and a roll up. This is the piss off for me. I Roll up by TM61 by Miller gets the win, and I ask why. I know why. Gargano and Ciampa are already popular, Revival are already the champs, uh, Authors of Pain are already dominant, they need to do something with TM61. This match was great. They dismantled Thorne with his partner on the outside, Miller, at, at, you know, at the correct um, appropriate time, comes in, hits a dropkick and a quick roll-up, and gets a what-the-fuck-just-happened win over Sanity. Not only does that mean TM61 is in the finals, who I don't really give a shit about, it means this cool Sanity gimmick 
as of right now, unless they do something next week, has nothing to do at TakeOver Toronto, which kind of sucks, because they're more interesting than TM61. Their gimmick is they're from Australia. Their gimmick, their gimmick, sorry, is that you can't tell them apart except for one of them has tattoos. Their gimmick is the fact that their area code, their country code, phone code, whatever you want to call it, is on their ass. Their tag team name is their area code, and that's not anything I can get invested in, I'm sorry. Great athletes, for sure. From that point of view, I can't really say anything bad about these guys, but I don't have a reason to care either. Finals at TakeOver Toronto is going to be the Authors of Pain versus TM61 for the Dusty Rhodes Memorial Cup thing. We throw to William Regal in the back, who announced that Revival are, in fact, you know, in better physical shape, and as a punishment for their interference uh, with the Gargano and Ciampa match, they are going to defend their titles, not only defend their titles at TakeOver Toronto against Gargano and Ciampa, but they're going to do it in a two out of three falls match. I'll take it, because if this is not the time that Gargano and Ciampa pick up the tag team titles, they're never going to get them. Uh, Bobby Roode cuts a promo in the back, responding to Ty Dillinger. Again, like both these guys, but their promos are getting a bit repetitive, both ways. Ember Moon takes on Rachel Evers, and it's very, very short, but I like Ember Moon, I like her gimmick, I like her, you know, the entrance and the, and the whole bit. The presentation of the Ember Moon character so far is great. I wish she was in a feud that I could get invested in. I know she's not going to feud with Asuka just yet, um, but once Asuka destroys Mickey James, Mickey James versus Ember Moon could be a thing that we would like to see in the future. Color almost, uh, yeah, bloop. I can speak, I swear. Collar and elbow tie up and a trip roll up combination by Moon. Arm drag, arm bar, and a pin attempt by Moon into a head scissor. Gut wrench by Evers and a headlock with a post, and then a surfboard with a post. Running boot and a cartwheel in the corner, elbow by Moon. Top rope stunner, which I think they're calling the Eclipse, gets the predictable moon for predictable win for Ember Moon because who the hell is Rachel Evers? We are reminded that Alma, Almas versus Ex Alexander is happening next week. I really wish they had something better for Cedric Alexander because Cian Almas is dull as shit. Uh, the contract signing for Nakamura versus Samoa Joe goes as most contract signings do, except there's no physicality. Contract signing, Regal comes out, calls Nakamura out, calls a bunch of security out to stand between Nakamura and Joe. Joe's not even going to dignify them by coming to the ring. He comes out with his own table, sits on the ramp, and demands that William Regal present the, the contract to him. William Regal, looking a bit defeated in his own way, comes down, gives him, the, gives him the contract. He eventually signs it, drops it on the table so that William Regal has to pick it up again, take it back to Nakamura in the ring. Nakamura doesn't sign the contract. He drops it in the ring. He sort of gives Joe a weird look, beats the crap out of all the security guards in the ring, including putting one of them through a table, and then signs the contract and stares down Samoa Joe, and that's the end of the show. Kind of anticlimactic when we're so used to contract signings ending in a one-on-one -on -one brawl between the combatants, but it was different. It was not exactly cookie-cutter. But as it stands right now, we've got Nakamura versus Joe, we've got Mickey James versus Asuka, we've got... Uh, the tag team titles in a two out of three falls match. We got the Dusty Classic Finals. We got uh, Ty Dillinger and Bobby Roode. Sanity, I'm sure, will do something. They have to, um, because this gimmick is is going to fall on its face and lose all its momentum. If we have this, you know, it's not a big four pay per view, but it's connected to a big four pay per view. Hey, here's this great gimmick, except we didn't put them on the show, so they're going to be involved somehow, some way. We'll find that out next week. But for now. Looks good. The show's looking good. TakeOver Toronto's looking good. Survivor Series weekend is looking good. And I'm a pretty happy guy. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I will talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, I am tagging out. Bye, guys.